great to speak to you for the first time. Yeah, uh, it's uh, always good when we get time with the uh, team's technical directors. Um, I probably really wanted to kick off by sort of asking, as you went through last season, uh, as you sort of started to decide about what you're going to be doing for 2021, it, what was your assessment of the car by the time you got to the end of the year in terms of its, its strengths and weaknesses? Well, it was, uh, I think, after a couple of races, uh, it was soon clear uh, the issue we were dealing. Uh, one, uh, which is no point to rediscuss, uh, because it's been discussed at length in so many other uh, <laughs> forums, is uh, well known. Um, but it was only part of the story. Um, on our side, we we took us uh, too long to extract the potential of the car, irrelevant of the level of the potential in, in qualifying, because the, the show we delivered in the first four or five races in qualifying was embarrassing, which we ultimately fixed in uh, in, in Barcelona. Um, and, and then from that moment onward, we were able to pull out out of the car what the car could deliver with all its, uh, its limitation. Um, but nonetheless, we're quite exposed uh, on the race pace as soon as uh, you had demanding condition, demanding for the tires, where you need to, uh, where you need to, uh, to have uh, a possibility to extend your stints. If not, you fall into a, a two, uh, two or three pit stop strategy, and then it's game over uh, in, in in modern Formula One. So. Um, that, that were, uh, was probably one of the biggest issues, but uh, the primary issue, uh, apart from the first I mentioned, lack of performance. We, I mean, we, we, uh, we're, not, uh, uh, we're not doing a car to, to be fighting for, for P8, so evidently it forced us also to, uh, to question very hard ourselves of the work we had done during the winter on uh, aero concept, uh, the, the way we develop in the tunnel, our overall correlation or methodology, because uh, it's it's clear that some of the team had done in, during the winter a better job than we did. And that is uh, uh, extremely painful to go through, I must say, but it, it also had the beauty to force us to, well, to to really uh, turn every stone upside down and and, and question absolutely everything. And, and hopefully this year, some of those um, changes we've then been doing, which usually are quite uh, mid-long term, um, you see the result on mid-long term, we will start seeing a, a couple of uh, positives coming out of this. Okay, and then obviously as the season progressed, the, the change in the regulations for 21 uh, became clear. Um, yeah. What led you to make your decision on where you were going to spend your token? Uh, a mix of uh, where do we think we'll find most performance or where do we think we have most to recover to, uh, with respect to our direct competitors, but also without, uh, without making a big fuss of it, also taking into account the, uh, our resources and the fact that we, for 22, we would gear, gear up uh, for... for in 21, we would gear up a lot of our resources to prepare 2022. And therefore, uh, we also kept in the back of our heads that we didn't want to have, uh, uh, up until March, the entire company just producing the new car, new chassis, and all these things. So, so this regulation was inviting people to, uh, to make choice. Uh, for us, it, it became relatively uh, soon clear that the, the best was to invest on redoing the front end, effectively the nose, the front wing, rework the suspension, the front drum, uh, and the barge board to better feed the new diffuser because what you lost with the trim of the floor is gone. You're not gonna, uh, that surface that is missing because of this uh, uh, V trim, which is the most um, uh, penalizing uh, modification for, for the aero, that's gone. So this is the only way you can, in our view, uh, recover or climb back the slope is to massage the flow coming from uh, coming up uh, upstream to to better adapt to the new uh, to the new uh, topology you have on the rear so that's that's the main driver of uh, of us concentrating on the front well, that doesn't mean we haven't worked on the rear but the, uh, you are more limited and the rear works with what it gets from the front so if you do a better job on the front normally the rear is, is also happier mm -hmm. I think one of the things that stands out as soon as you see the new car is that the, the change in the nose shape and the fact that the 
uh, cape seems to go to the very uh, leading edge of the nose. I mean, it was that was that kind of the key part of the structural change in the nose? We had to redo the cone because we wanted to be able to maximize uh, the, the, the cape uh, and, and also rework some of those uh, quite complicated internal ducts we, we had, um, as well as uh, if you, I mean, if you have a look also the, the pylon position, they, they change. So there were quite a lot of uh, small changes that uh, were added on that, that uh, ultimately forced us to uh, to also raise uh, a new challenge for our design office and the ZFE group. So. The other big change this year was the uh, error regulations around the floor edge, uh, the rear brake ducts, and then the sort of the Y250 in the middle of the diffuser. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how much was a penalty were those changes for yeah, for you when you first looked at them. Total sum is probably more than a full year of development. So uh, the, the biggest, uh, big, the most painful one was uh, the side trim. The, mm -hmm. the fence in the diffuser was an order two in comparison as the, uh, the reduction of span of the lower deflector on the, the drum was also. I mean, they are, st they are still hurting, but in, there's no way comparable with, uh, with the losses uh, induced by the trim and uh, the modification, the continuity and all the devices we had along the edges uh, that has been I've got feeling uh, probably 80%, if not more, of the, of the losses. I'm not very good at statistics. Uh, and uh, yeah, order of magnitude is, is more than what you would find during a normal winter with stable regulation. So it's been quite a big, a big blow and I'm having to freeze uh, so many components of the car for obvious reason and financial reason for, for, the, for the industry. Yeah? I think that uh, major challenge even more difficult to well to get uh, to climb back uh, the, the performance slope on that side yeah and obviously the other thing was that so much of the chassis has been homologated for this year how, how much sort of performance have you potentially um not gained i guess is the way to describe it by not being able to change things like you know the tarb uh, and the outboard or the outboard suspension bits that you uh, fix to the chassis uh, stuff like that. It's a uh, one million dollar question because by uh, one of the positives also to when you have limited resources to free some large component is that you force your people to concentrate on on the others. So instead of trying to uh, do a uh, seven dishes meal with uh, two cooks, which can be quite challenging, you end up uh, having a couple of dishes lesses, and therefore you can spend more time, more resource, more quality in the others. So I, I'll never have the uh, answer. My impression was it probably on the short term helped us to, um, to climb back quicker on the attrition, the, the easy parts, than, than having to uh, invest a lot of resources in redoing a tub, which is a, a very demanding exercise usually for a team, because it's not only the shape, but then calculation, testing it, producing it. Um, and another pro was that it allowed us to uh, to spend or to do more things internally. Usually the chassis is being done internally. By not having to redo any chassis during the year, you free up massive amount of production capacity internally which allows you to uh, to bring back things that normally you would outsource but that are also quite expensive so uh, if you save money on that side then somehow you would expect that midterm you will also uh, make the car uh, the, the car uh, quicker so um, i i don't know with unlimited resource and less restriction sure uh, there is a price to pay but that, that formula one is disappearing. Formula One is is uh, is probably behind us now. It's about with the resources you have, which are now limited, uh, try to to uh, really make the wisest call on, on what you want to develop. And I am not unhappy to not have redone, to have frozen the the, the tub. Yeah. And are you running old tubs, or are they just freshly made tubs for this year to the old molds? They have enough mileage, so we. We obviously uh, check them, and, uh, and when they they've been doing, a, I wouldn't say a Botox session, but uh, uh, we took uh, a bit of TLC and and going through QC and intensive QC to make sure they were still okay. Uh, but uh, no, we are we are currently not planning to to redo any any new tab. No. Um, and in terms of changes to the, the parts that you come from Ferrari, obviously there's the, there's the PU, which I hope is is an improvement. 
Uh, was there any particular changes around other aspects like the transmission, gear carrier, um, or other listed non-listed parts that you got from them? Uh, the transmission is carryover. Uh, they invested in their token in a new gearbox, but uh, uh, back of my head didn't offer it because they were also quite late due to the nine week shutdown. So they didn't offer to uh, their clients to possibility to invest in or buy or lease, sorry, this new uh, gearbox. So we, we decided to carry over what we had. And also the, it, it saved us a lot of time and a lot of resource plus money to concentrate on, on other areas, which probably bring you a larger return on investment. Mm -hmm. 